Night Moves, one of my favorites, actually. Night Moves? Yeah. Did you see it? <laughs> Which one is it? <laughs> it? It was, I think oh, it, it's it was coming 15. Up. It's the, um, oh, it's the we haven't earthquake seen it one. Oh, the earthquake. I re- yeah, we'll I talk we could, about I wish we could have talked about that. Yeah, we are we going can. to. At the end, we're oh, going to okay. ask you questions about that one. Okay. Because Stephanie's going to come on for it, but we want to talk to you about it, too. Oh, great. So great. we'll do it at the end where we'll kind of place it in a different spot, I think. Yeah, I do remember that. You do, yeah. I just remember the building, like the ducting, or like the, right? On s- yes, stage. Yes, where Pancake was hidden. Yeah, Pancake. Ah! I remember Pancake? Pancakes Crawling became a pancake. Right, pancake. Right, right, right. <laughs> what? <laughs> Does Pancake die? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Pancake's a pair of slippers now. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's, it's a single slipper, though. Are we rolling? <laughs> We're rolling. Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> that was traumatic. Welcome to the OC Bitches. Aww. <laughs> Sorry, Rach. I didn't mean to scare you. Welcome to the OC Bitches Season 4, Episode 11, The Dream Lover. Dream Lover. Do you know that song? There's a Bobby Darren song. Well, I just went Mariah Carey. But, oh, you know. okay. That one, too. Uh, the above. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Uh, today, we have back... For round number two, you started the first season with us, um, our beloved uh, director, Patrick Norris. He directed the Gringos, Dream Dream Lover, Night Moves, and the Earthquake episode. Well, Night Moves is the Earthquake episode. Oh, sorry. Not and. Yeah. AKA. Of just season four of the OC. So you were one of our directors who stayed all through. through, I missed season three. Oh, you didn't miss anything. Well, (laughs) there were a lot of changes. There were a lot of changes. But uh, season four was... uh, you know, it's a very enlightening season for me because everything changed. Well, in I'm, what, in what, <laughs> first of all, why did you not, why weren't you there in season three? And after that, how did things change? I wasn't there in season three because I got this directing job in Hawaii. So I took it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I, I, it was one of those phone calls that was hard to make because I did feel part of the family in mm-hmm. one and two. So in three, I, I decided I'd take this gig for me because it was a career opportunity to move to a, producing directing gig mm. which gave me a little more voice and the things i did and and stuff like that you know um episodic directors can sometimes be well a pain uh <laughs> and come in with a different vision uh than what is been set already before them so i wanted to experience this other format and it was cool it was really cool i really enjoyed it yeah was yeah. it just one season yeah one season it was called it was called uh, north shore Oh. Jason Momoa was a bartender at the time. <laughs> Amanda funny. Rigetti. Yeah, and Amanda. Oh, yeah. Amanda. Yes. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Right, right. For Fox. Yes. Yeah, you exactly. Go. So it was still kind of the family. They told you. Kind that. of, sort of, maybe. <laughs> it wasn't the same. Uh, but, you know, the, the difference for me was basically the showrunners. It was more of a corporate showrunning atmosphere there than the OC. Mm-hmm. Right. And when that gig was finished, um, it was definitely finished. And then as I went back, I, I approached Josh and Stephanie about coming back to the OC, and they let me in. So it was oh, cool. That's awesome. Very nice. Yeah. Very well, we nice. missed you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It was worth the experience for me, and it was worth the you know, time getting back and getting back in sync with you guys. But things had really changed dramatically within the cast. You know, you killed off Marissa. You Right. Did all this all this fun stuff while I was gone. Um, <laughs> I noticed you were still trying to get tears out of Ryan and things like that and emotion. Um, so it was kind of interesting to come back into that fold with that, you know, with the with the new kind of format of what was going on on the OC. This yes. was a very new format, especially <laughs> this episode in particular. I was watching it yesterday. I'm like, what show am I watching? <laughs> what there is this? It. It's Brody very unique. Is like on an ayahuasca trip. I'm like, I don't even know <laughs> anymore what's you know, happening. I, I tell you, you know, I really had to think it through, you know, um, of what that episode was about. And what that episode to me was about was not being able to connect with friendships and relationships, which is, it was something new for the OC because we always seem to 
you know, kind of tie a bow at the end of things and, and bring everybody together, where in this particular episode, it really felt like people weren't coming together. They were getting honest with their own, you know, spirit animals or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, of who they were. <laughs> and the Shay and, and um, Adam Brody stuff, you know. First of all, Chris Pratt, when he came on the set, you know, Adam was ready to kill himself anyway. <laughs> He, he, he was yeah. like making oh, fun of all, a lot yeah. of, all it. of it. He was like, yeah. all of it. Oh, he, he wanted out. There was no doubt about <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. And, you know, God bless him, you know, for however he traveled in that scene. But but when I remember when Chris Pratt came to the set, and he was very new at the time, you know, he was you know doing television as an actor. His energy was so infectious mm-hmm. and so positive. And you couldn't have put Adam with a better person for this episode, I don't think. Right. And that brought the more positive Adam out and the more fun and, and kind of like what I remembered in the first season kind of feeling with him. So that whole storyline just blew my mind. <laughs> it was like, how do you do this? How do you make this happen? Yeah, how do you how make did this you happen? <laughs> yeah, good question. Well, as always, I trust the actors I work with a lot. And as you know, I don't give a lot of notes. I'm pretty quiet about that because I have a lot of trust. I'm one of those directors that actually trusts what actors bring and study. And and if they know their lines, I'm just thrilled to death. And if they say lines that really feel not right and do it well, I feel even better about them. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that 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 always sells the episode for me. You know, but again, getting back to the non-connection reconnection kind of vibe. I had disconnected as well um, in my own right um, from that episode. Mm. I had a hard time with it when I read it. And Mm. again, as episodic directors, we come in, we don't get to choose our scripts. We don't get to whatever. We get handed a script and this is what you're going to make. And when I saw that, I thought, oh my God, how am I going to pull this off? Because it's a lot of words. It's a lot of connection, not connecting. You know, it's different. (laughs) <laughs> so I was I was able to I was able to disconnect in a way to tell the story, you know. And I love the writer. I think she's brilliant. And the yeah. the writing staff were they were you could tell everybody had a piece of this action. Everybody right. had a piece of this action. And I wasn't privy to, you know, what actors were thinking about it or whatever. I wasn't thrilled with uh, Julie's storyline. I wasn't thrilled with, you know, that whole setup. God. Only because I experienced it in the late 60s. Oh, you, you got uh, the phone call? <laughs> oh, you got a no, round of no, applause in the no, late 60s? In the late 60s, we'd actually meet at the free clinic accidentally <laughs> to get, you know, pills. Um, and actually, you're in the valley. And you go, oh, you were with her as well. Oh, my um, God. But that's, no, so so I could resonate with it in a, in a kind of a history Form. You took it personally when she was like, don't tell them, make them think they've got <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, ex- exactly. I was like, oh, yeah. So it started me thinking like, well, maybe that wasn't real. You know, and I took that medicine for nothing. Um, Better be safe than sorry. Though, <laughs> oh, you know? God. I mean, I can't imagine ever getting that phone call. I'm turning you Oh, red. I have to tell you. I Well, okay. First of all, we didn't, the synopsis of this whole episode, I'm going to read it really quick just to okay. clarify. Ryan competes with Henri Michel for Taylor's affections. Che leads Seth on a trek of spiritual renewal complete with otters and frogs. Meanwhile, Kirsten and Julie have to do some damage control, and Caitlin takes on some mean girls in the Harbor High marching band. Uh, So damage control, the clap is going around, a.k.a. chlamydia. That is what we are talking about. That is what we were referring to. What I was going to say was, I had a friend who had gotten it, and like we knew the guy. He was a friend, and I was like, you have to call him and tell him. And she didn't want to do it, and I made her do it, and she did the right thing, and she told him. I think it's always the right Don't thing. Don't you think it's you always, sure. it's always, always tell the people right if they have the clap? I feel like that is the way to go. Oh, how do you take for it? Sure. How do you take it? I, I think he's still in denial to this day, but hopefully he's like <laughs> They're still trying to find oh, him. Man. Also, Lila Gerstein wrote this episode, who yes. was the creator, showrunner of Heart of Dixie. Right. You know, and love. Yes. And directed by you, Patrick. I enjoyed doing that as well. Yes. And so we well, I enjoy working with you. We always enjoy working with you. But yes, <laughs> the th- all of the shenanigans <laughs> going on in this episode are so. Out of control. They're out of control. <laughs> they are. But, you know, it, the relationships, again, <laughs> really paid off in, in who they were paired with. So I thought that was brilliant in, you know, in Josh's world and, and Lila's and everybody's. Was, it, was, it was so, you couldn't have paired people for a better disaster, okay? I mean, the earthquake's one thing, 
but this real life, you know, uh, relationship thing is really tricky, I think, um, especially in so many episodes of a television show. Right. You know, because, you know, now we're doing like 10 episodes per season for things right. and stuff. And you guys are doing like 26. Yeah. You know, that's a lot of story to tell. Right. That's a lot of shoe, you we, know. We do, we do explore every theme imaginable <laughs> in humankind right. on this show. And I like that you're talking about human connection because we're seeing that in the beginning that Summer declined the engagement so she can figure out what her who she is. And when we open on this episode, we see that Seth just can't get rid of this elephant in the room of this rejection. Even though I was like, we we at the end of it, it was like, did she say no, she doesn't want to be with him? And it was like, no, she just no. doesn't want to have the weight of the engagement hanging over. Right. But then we also have Taylor, who's been calling Ryan, who won't talk to her. So these two couples are now not connecting for different reasons. Right. But of course, Seth says, I guess it's a week since any of them have spoken. So Seth's going to show up and he sees that. Uh, but the, yeah, he shows up. But who else shows up? Che's shown up because he's been feeling <laughs> Seth. He just jumps he's on the plane. The he's okay. feeling so the vibe. Okay, so that's a movie in itself, right? Right. Yeah, it totally. It is. You know, I, as soon as I got to the otter and the pool, I went, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted is, to talk to you about that. Yeah, that was a challenge. That was a real challenge. Um, but again, you had to get out there to really go there. Uh huh. You had to really embrace it. You know what? Some I think it was an acting coach or somebody said to believe is brave in what we do. Right. Just like go for it. It right. doesn't like that suspension of disbelief. We've just got I, to. I was just picturing you and Brody on the soundstage with an otter in the pool, and I was—I couldn't even imagine. Like, <laughs> you know, it's interesting because we, to stylistically make that work for me, uh, was to create a, uh, you know, a, a sense of these guys are high, you uh, know, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, which they were. Uh, I mean, story-wise, maybe, and. Uh, I thought that, you know, by, by lighting and, and, and just going there in, in the sense of a psychedelic, um, which I was able to do a lot of back in the late sixties, I had the reference. Okay. Right. right, right. Not the otter. You were the man for this not job. Not the otter, right, but the right. situation. Yeah, that's why they, <laughs> yeah, it was perfect. I think, I think Josh nailed me on this one. Yes. And, um, so the idea for me was like, the more we could create a fantasy of it, in this high, the more older people like me could relate to it. <laughs> no, that 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 we could create a visual sense of of this transition that he was going through for his spirit animal, you know, and um, it it was fascinating. It was fascinating to create because we'd have to shoot things in two different sets, one angle and then the other angle at mm -hmm. the pool, right. like when he goes into his room. And the otter's and, in his room all of a sudden. Yeah, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the otter's, the pool's there, all that stuff is there. So we brought the door out by the pool so when he opened it, we could see the otter and stuff. So it was tricky to shoot, but once it was cut together, I think it, it played really well, Yeah, you know, so that whole experience. You have a wrangler on set with an otter, a trained otter somewhat? That otter had the best trailer. I mean, that <laughs> otter was so taken care of yes. and so protected, a lot more than the rest of us, you know. Right. Animals on sets are yeah. super protected. Whether Even if it's a cockroach, they have a special handler. We call them wranglers. Oh, sure. Yeah, you, that are very, very well protected. That's right. That's yeah. right. And so all I needed to do was get the otter out of the pool and up on a chase lounge to connect with Seth. You know, that was, <laughs> right. that was the challenge. And, you know, it took a while, but that was a pretty cool otter. That otter kind of oh, like, so cute. you know, it would, yeah, he was this really is, cute. A yeah. real, a real sea otter, which I, they have a very significant place in my, not in my home, in, in, my, in our <laughs> heart, but Adam and I regularly go to Morro Bay just to oh. go see the sea otters. You just take a drive up. Sure. Are you talking about the elephant seals? No, no the sea otters sea in Morro otters. Bay. Okay. Where they a lot hold of hands. sea otters up there. Yeah, and you just were like, hey, let's go see the otters this weekend. How yeah. cute. So sweet. I was thinking San Simeon or the elephant seals. Oh, yeah. Sorry. No, that Yes, was... they're great too. Yeah, yeah. very big. Them. But you can see Adam <laughs> specifically going, Mom, Dad, I'm scared. And he's like, I guess it's supposed to be. But you can tell that he's making fun of it as yeah, he's the saying whole, it. He is <laughs> a whole, really whole episode. Well, sea otters are actually very connected. And they hold of, hands so they don't float away. That's right. While they sleep, they hold yeah. hands. It's so cute. 
Isn't that cool? I love sea otters. Yeah. They're really yeah, cute. Yeah. So so that was a cool spirit animal for that episode, for sure. And the, for and sure. the, the thing is, like, they both have the same one, right? Isn't that the reveal no, he's, that Che... Well, he he dreams he's a frog and he was swimming and his oh, and the frog said, falls he falls in love with an otter in oh, his dream. Oh, that's what. Okay, maybe I was. <laughs> that's high. why the connection at the end in the in the in the tent there he was a little taken by Adam, right? right. Because the, his frog fell in love with part his, the two otter. probably would have revealed more. Can we just talk about them? Being, <laughs> right? Can I we talk about that. them going on this hike? Where was this? Do you remember? Yeah, I do remember because I, I, I'm scarred. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's Temescal Canyon. I thought it'd be oh. really cool to shoot next to my house. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I asked right, them those if we big could shoot there. eucalyptus or those big trees. I mean, that's going on hikes in L.A. That's what they look like. Even that's Laurel right. Canyon looks like that. And I hike yeah. up there all the time, and I thought, wow, this would be a great place to do this. Oh. And um, so we were... That's where we went, and it's taken me about 10 years to shake that off. Really? Well, yeah, I had to find different trails to hike and stuff because it was like, oh, my God, this is a long day. But he's so funny. He was like, what, you're taking me on this thing, and he's just going like, man, it's not about the destination. It's the journey, which is something I've taken me a long time to learn that. It really is about the journey, not, right. not the destination. But when he finally is like, I want to go back to the car, and he's like, that's six hours away, and Adam smacks him. We have reached the sacred spot. Now, we gotta build a sweat lodge. Jay, look at me. We're not staying here. Where's the car? The car is six hours away. I mean, if we could even find it in the dark. We have no choice but to stay here till tomorrow. Go grab some willow branches. <laughs> How yeah, he, he didn't start him. laughing. I didn't get that. Was that, that. improv? I the, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'll yeah. be honest with you. <laughs> and I, I, I saw it twice again, you know? And I went, <laughs> Is that just Adam? <laughs> is that his moment? Or is that something that was scripted? I could not remember for the life of me. And I can't, and maybe somebody will clear this up for us, a, a fan or somebody. I can't understand the reaction that Chris gave to that. He was trying not to laugh, it looked like to me, but he was yeah. like, go get some willow branches. Oh, yeah, the willow. He's like, willow, <laughs> right. do you know what willow looks like? Yeah. like <laughs> oh, know. man. Oh. I do remember right before that, though. Do you remember when he was first meeting with Seth and he's explaining? He's like, man, hey, man, I'm here for you because you're emasculated and you, right. your male animus is broken. <laughs> and, of course, I had to look that all that up, the the Jung, um, Carl Jung. I said, who you say? Oh, yeah. It's your... It's your um, your individual's true inner self and inner feminine part of the male personality and vice versa. It's like this very, oh. um, yeah. So, but Chris had to keep eating these figs and there's a very famous blooper and apparently some were better than others and they were <laughs> awful. Like, like sat, and he was like, he was like almost like, this is awful. I can't keep doing the scene. Did you know that figs are nature's biological response modifiers? And since I know that you're ailing spiritually, what? Come on, Seth. You don't have to lie to me, man. I can see your aura. I'm sorry. I think bad this one. one's a bad one. <laughs> do you remember that at all? I, I do remember that. <laughs> yeah. I remember him doing that. But I think that was also an actor's choice. Uh, that you didn't the, like him? No, it kept eating the figs. I mean, come on, oh, man. Oh, yeah. How many figs do you have to eat to really get it right? Right, right. Right, because it was in the, you know, figs are, right. But then he, they end up saying, we're going to build a sweat lodge, which I actually did, um, the River Rafters do this. I did this on the Grand Canyon. So you stick these rocks in a fire, right. heat them up, yeah. build this sweat lodge. They do it actually under the sand. And then you pour water over them so it creates steam. Right. But they accidentally got some embers of the wood, and the next thing you know, it was smoke, and I was like choking out. It's oh. a very claustrophobic thing, but that's yeah. just my personal experience. Well, you guys with didn't it. Experience but it can, that, but it can be healing. <laughs> it as can well. be if you're in the right, yeah, situation. If you're in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Or if you're on My favorite line in that whole sequence, in that when he does the whole hot rock thing, is uh, Seth copying that he ate some berries and him saying, Oh, you ate the berries. <laughs> and and he then, goes, is that bad? He's like, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, let's go for a ride. You, you know. know I did have to mention that this was 2006, 2007. Right. And talking about, you know, just in my, you know, research of this, that since it's aired, you know, our awareness, because pop popular culture started doing this, like, um, so-and-so is my spirit animal or saying spirit animal. Oh, yeah. And apparently it is considered a microaggression. It's considered, um, you know, uh, culturally 
appropriative and insensitive to a culture to say spirit animal. Really? Yeah. So a lot of what they're doing here is like it's it's not even necessarily uh, spirit animal isn't necessarily a thing in a lot of native cultures. Right. But um, but if it's ever considered mockery or making fun of, that's a microaggression. I feel like it's always a compliment because I was like, oh my God, she's my spirit animal, which is like complimenting the person. Right. Uh, so but I've in, never thought about that. Well, apparently since ab- right around 2007 through like 2012, it got really popular like in culture to say, hey, Beyonce is my spirit animal or something like that. And that right. became, and that's when people started saying, okay, we, we need some awareness around this. Right. And so that was an interesting, some interesting articles that I read based on interesting. that. Interesting. That yeah. were interesting. Yeah. So apparently. You know what it is? Interesting. <laughs> well, it's, 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 you're right about it turning into a, a, a popular thing too, right. you know, and I just happened to have with me, just <gasps> so you know, what the spirit, <laughs> spirit animal guidebook. Right. Oh okay. my God. Does it tell so, you what yours is? Well, this is the best part. <laughs> this is the best part. I can't wait. And I know you're not prepared for this, <gasps> but I am. These are spirit animal cards. What? So as we go into the month month of March, yes, we will I'm so be into this. we will be a spirit animal of some kind. So without looking at the card, okay, I get to pick one. I think you should. I'm pick so one. excited. <laughs> oh, I'll come to you. Oh, okay, bollocks. Here we go. All right. <laughs> Okay. Katie's like, I want to do it. <gasps> What'd you get? Hyena. You did? Oh, the hyena. <laughs> you guys, I got like a great white shark. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, what am I? Oh, I'm a nightingale. All oh right. my God, so, that's beautiful. Well, you don't know. Oh, okay. Until you oh, look up the oh, definition okay, yeah. of the book. Are we, are you so we'll us? have to get to that. We'll, well have no, to get to that. Can we do it but, now? Well, you can do it. I, I think you can I do it. I think this is very you important. Ask Katie if she thinks it's cool, you know. Yeah, yeah we, want, we need All the right. definitions. So, we're we're wow. wacky, just like season four. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. This is very yeah. very in keeping with this episode. By the way, there were no you. berries eaten before we did this. <laughs> there, maybe Dang. there should have been. Okay, shark. Uh, is it alphabetical? Okay. I really hope. I think so. It's not. Okay, hold on. You'll find it. No, I think there's. I think it's important to note index. that the article that I read is that um, for natives, uh, native cultures that it's not just spirit animal it's it's connection to everything in nature is it's exactly sacred. what it is and when right. you read about the card you chose it it definitely reveals oh, i that. found nightingale do you want to read yours first oh, I found you can it. read it for me okay fearless voice speech communication or song the song of the nightingale is otherworldly this simple brown bird, almost unnoticeable among the flashy plumage of other birds, transports its listener to the realm of poetry. Nightingale energy is with us when we write, compose, and especially when we sing. It reminds us that music heals the deepest wounds. This card indicates a need to open the bridge between the heart and the voice. Is there something you need to say? How long has it been since you sang? Turn it up, write it down, and <laughs> let it out. That there you go. Amazing. Oh, sweet. When in balance, sing, speak freely with kindness. When out of balance, shy, lump in the throat to bring into balance music. That's very cool. Right. And I'm a musician and You're, I play in little okay, wow. bands and stuff. That's and so sing, cool. Patrick, sing. Uh, no, I will not sing. <laughs> but but that's that I think what it what it relates to is okay, here you're getting connected to something else besides your brain. Mm-hmm. You're starting to appreciate another part of the life, the spirit, the the thing that we all go into. There's something very, very um, realistic, even though this is this silly, you know, s- situational thing that we put on this TV show. But there is something very, very um, real about fasting and getting in touch with your inner being or whatever that right. is, your inner higher self and the hyena. Hyena. Oh, that's me. Okay. Humor, wit, sarcasm. The hyena personality is a jokester and crowd pleaser, but below the surface, there are unfulfilled dreams to be realized. When the hyena card appears, it's time to reflect on your reliance on sarcasm and humor to express your truth. Are you using jokes to hide old resentments in relationships or to mask things that you feel uncomfortable discussing? What would happen if you took your goals seriously? When in balance, charming, witty, fun to be around. When out of balance, scrappy, petty, suspicious. To bring into balance, sobriety. Yeah. That huh. sounds like old me. 
Oh, that sounds like <laughs> that, dueling, no, I'm right? balanced. Like that sounds like that sounds like ah! years ago. Shark. Yeah. Directness, exposure, revealing true nature and desire. The shark is only dangerous when we don't acknowledge it. This card indicates that something big needs to be exposed. It's lurking in the depths and creating tension. <laughs> shark energy takes over us when we are hesitant to be honest, to be totally ourselves, or to say what we really want. It may be tempting to continue pretending nothing is wrong, but when shark energy is at play, we feel its presence encircling us. When in balance, intriguing, intriguing, captivating, mysterious. When out of balance, sneaky, destructive. To bring into balance, honesty. There you go. There oh, you go. Wow. That's so, heavy. I'm going to take a picture of that. I believe that if we connect to anything that we, we learned from this particular yes. moment, anything. Right. It could be a phrase. It could be a word. It could be the whole, you know, thing. Um, it helps us. It helps us to find another directive to where we want to go, what we want to do, to be positive. Yeah. Like when I, for instance, this episode that we're talking about, for me as a person, when I, when I was, when they told me it was going to be episode 11, the first thing that came to my mind, I was like, oh, fuck, that's the worst episode I ever did. <laughs> oh. How could anybody like, like even want to talk <laughs> about it? You know? No, seriously, that's me. Right. You know? Your and perception. My perception, right. exactly. My perception, um, and I have a lot of self-worth. I, I feel really good about what I do and a lot of shows I do. But I realized that where is this negativity coming from in me about this particular journey that I was on, you know, uh, in this episode? And I knew exactly what it was. It, what it was was my disconnect. My, I had just been doing another show down in Texas for a while and in between the OC episodes, you know, and it was a whole different experience. And I wanted to bring that experience to the OC that I was having. And it was kind of stifled in some ways, you know, on, on set. Not necessarily in the writer's room, really, because they didn't know anything about it. But the way I wanted to shoot, the way I wanted to tell stories, it wasn't going to fly, you know. Mm -hmm. But I had made a change in myself. So that's why I looked at this in a different way. And then when I watched the episode, and I watched it literally three times since they called me about this. The third time I watched it was this morning. <laughs> and it all came to me and all that came to me of what it was about me that disconnected so i want to apologize to begin with uh for the episode on my behalf but it turned out great and it turned out great because i was able to look at it this morning with different eyes mm. and that was the relationships that everybody had within the episode and it wasn't about me it was about these people in the oc and i felt very positive very positive about coming Singing in about Nightingale, it. Singing Nightingale. Singing Nightingale. <laughs> Speak right. up. Yeah. Yeah. But there yeah. is something so important to be said about the, the things that make us feel ill at ease. It's not necessarily the world. It's our perceptions. And if there's something out in the world, because the world is just going to be the world. It's neutral. And when we apply negativity to it, that's something if we look at, look in, look at ourselves within ourselves, we right. can change that perception and say, well, you know, Anytime I have anything that feels awful to me, I'm like, that's just me placing that on something. Right. And I can change my attitude or apply something positive. So I think that's really exactly. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I don't have a writer's room outside my house telling me what, how I'm going to live my life and, and what right. I'm going to do. <laughs> so I kind of mess up once in a while um, and not intentionally. Um, but I learn more about myself the more open I am about the things I do these days. Right. You know? Yeah. And really cool. I mean, I never I love I really enjoyed this episode because I've also chosen I had such a wonderful experience on the show. Mm -hmm. And there were some storylines that were a little more frustrating than others. But I also know that there was some frustration going on behind the scenes. But there's something really magical and wonderful and weird and about this episode that just made me smile. It's great. You know, you when know? I was watching uh, Julia Ling with, you know, the band people. She's a gem. Okay. And, <laughs> oh, and Willow Lucy. and her. What a, what a combination to put together. Oh, my goodness. Has that angst and, and where it ended up in that relationship. Uh, and Chris Brown is, like, definitely not an actor. There's no two ways about it. You right. know, and if you watch him again and again, you go, okay, he's not an actor. But you accept him because of who he is. But that said... Okay, uh, the Julia Ling and and uh, you know uh, Willa together yeah. uh, w was amazing to me. It cracked me up. It was total rival. It was total, you know, we're going after the same guy. Dig in, 
And, you know, I really you know, felt bad for her, her, for Lucy. Right. I mean, I, I think this was another find. There's so many great finds in these guest ca- characters that have come yes. along. And I, I, I was just fascinated by her because I, you know, looking at this, I was like, wow, she's just. Is that her her delivery was like very specific, you know, her her voice and the way she was saying it and how in love with Will she was she was. Right. And then it turns out that this Julia Ling, she went on to star in Chuck. Yes. Josh took her to Chuck. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. um and she's like so impressive. She's a martial artist. She speaks like three or four different languages. She was she's just like highly, highly successful as a human being. So Hats off to you, Julia. But that was it was a really great character, even though it was really just great. this. Yeah. This now I also had read, and I don't know if you remember this, I read that in an interview with Chris Brown that he said, I'm gonna I'm gonna do about seven episodes of the OC. But this is the last time we see him. This, this is the last time we see him? This is three episodes. Right. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was curious if like they were like because the way she breaks up with him, I understand very abrupt. It was, it was really it was mean. cruel. Really mean. It was so OC though. It was like <laughs> her her version of like, <laughs> I'm doing you a favor. Right. So but right. it was just so mean and immature. I would I was not a fan. I, I felt don't know. Like, I liked it. I you liked did? it. I really okay. did. Huh. I really did. I thought it was a great way out. I did. It yeah. it was OC, it, you're right. It was the OC for it sure. Caitlin. For sure. We're we're done. It's over. Right. Bye. You know, there's no long, dried out emotional scene or anything like that. And and I got to hand it to the writers for that. It's like, you know, it could have gone the other way. Hey, this doesn't work out for us and blah, 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 blah. But All right. yeah, I got a couple of buddies down at the beach. I think I'm going to go. You've given you me know? another perspective and I, right. I'll back you on but that. She almost, you. But <laughs> she almost does it in a way that she's like, I, I don't have the time or energy. I am who I am. And I... I'm not going to take you away from being who you are. Right. And like, she's like, I don't want to waste the time. But, you know, it almost, I don't know. I just felt like Caitlin, it also felt like she was being, she's she's doing it with some armor. Right. Yeah. But I think her, she was a great character. She was a great yeah. character yes. for sure. Yeah. Um, and she brought a lot to it. And I think in every scene she did in that episode. She did. Yeah. Even in the beginning when she's skateboarding and she gives Ryan advice to... Oh, Go yeah. to get Taylor a gift. Uh, yeah. yeah <laughs> she's like 15. But she's like, listen, bro. <laughs> you know. I, I mean, and he's not even creative to go outside of her suggestion. No, he literally he's goes like, to the quickie mart. Right. Goes <laughs> to the quickie mart, gets this, gets this little bear, and Henri Michel is like, what's this? I love a that little guy. teddy I love bear. That guy. I need that guy in my life. I, I need, actually. <laughs> that is, he, now talk about positive, right? I right. Mean, he sees everything differently. That's he sees true. the glass always half Lavio full. Rose. Right. He's not a, he's not your traditional competitive like he's he's like oh this is so sweet and he's not going to keep it from Taylor. He's when Taylor sees the gift yeah. he's like it's okay for you to I like something from yeah. a lover. <laughs> exactly. And, and you know it's like and how does it make you feel? Because he's he's transparent. He's a voice of reason. He's honest. And that's what a lot of our characters don't necessarily always have. Yeah, he had a calmness about him yeah. that was just so beautiful that he brought to that character. And, uh, you know, it, like I said, for an episodic director to show up and just all of a sudden you're in the, in, in, in the heat of everything and you're watching these actors do their thing, uh, he was just right on. Right. I, and especially with um, Ben, you know, he yeah. was just totally right on. It's like, oh, I'm a human being. Like, I warn you, I bleed all over the place. Right, I'm a, <laughs> like, but, you know, he's well, willing. you are here to beat me up. <laughs> yeah. I must warn you, I bleed. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So exactly, cute. you know. Yeah. Um, and it's like priceless. It's yeah, priceless to me, that character in that situation. He's poking at him, but he's, but he's also... I don't know, but he's not afraid to have the competition. You know, it's, it's, uh, exactly. And yeah. I think, I, and for me, you know, of the male gender, I think that is a great way to approach the, being threatened mm-hmm. by another male or, <laughs> you know, somebody coming into my, you know, my, my arena with my wife or my friends or right, my girlfriend right. or whatever. You know, it's like, it's just to be, oh, you know, this is cool. You know, you're doing what you do. Awesome. You know, if you can beat me out, good luck. Right. You know. right. And, and you know, we're also watching Taylor on this journey of, you know, she, Ryan's not calling her. She's, you know, he's he's given her this this little bear and 
you know, but in the meantime, after he says, you know, does this bear make you feel anything? And he says, she's like, no, because she also said to Summer, you know, I'm going to maybe I'll move in with him and maybe I can fall in love with him because I need it because and she's she's got this rebound thing because Ryan's rejected her. And so she's now forcing herself into this person right here in front of me loves me so much. Right. I need this and I need this love so much. But then when Ryan. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then when she finally gets, oh, well, can we just talk about how Summer gets her over? You know, tells her to come over for dinner, and then you oh, have when this I go cute to scene. Choke. I go to choke Ben. Don't choke. <laughs> that is one of the biggest bloopers. You guys couldn't get through it. Really? Ready? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not gonna work. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. Are you I'm listening? listening? I'm listening. Okay, ready? Yeah. Do not choke. Okay, I wasn't going to until you did that. You have a wide neck. A really small hand. <laughs> Well, imagine. I know. I mean, yes, I can imagine. <laughs> you can imagine. And he kept saying, you're like, don't choke. And you're like, big neck, wide neck, little hands. <laughs> I wasn't written that I actually choke him? I don't, I don't think so. I think you I think you went for I it. I think we were playing around. You were playing around. And and I just want to back up a one more second here on this. And I have to say, you and Autumn Reese are, are, are fabulous together. You guys. Aww, no, you you brought the sunshine in that episode big time. I totally, yes. I always had fun working with Autumn and you can see that we really do genuinely click. Have you fun do, together. you yes. do. You guys are like this kind of like quasi Charlie's Angels together. <laughs> it's like really cool. Scheming. Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. And I also like when Summer and Ryan have scenes because those yes. are very rare too. And that's what, you know, in the kitchen when I right. choke him. You two, and behind the scenes, it was just a giggle fest. You and Ben <laughs> McKenzie just laughed the whole time. <laughs> because, yeah, just well, because. Because, yeah. Choking him out. Choking him out. Right. <laughs> that's right. But that's you know what, what? Summer also did something really, really sweet in this scene or episode is what? this date that she set for Seth. We've never seen her do that. This right. like video yeah. games and the and the that was a beautiful moment. It was actually really nice. That and he's like, he I can't handle he it. And he bailed. His, he was what's the word? Something was missing. He's he's emasculated. Oh. He's a mask. His works. animus is broken. Animus. He broke his animus. <laughs> he broke his animus. I broke yes. my animus. I got to get that t-shirt. <laughs> I, I broke, broke my, my animus. animus. <laughs> yeah. Check right. in with me later. <laughs> right. 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 But that right. was a romantic setup. It really was. Yeah, and was to see her really try and go, you know, go forward like that in that relationship was great. Yeah. And, you know, my problem with that is that with that scene. Yeah. Is that he didn't accept that evening with you. Yeah. Yeah. What's I had a problem. man? I, so, and that's where we're acting in ego. That's when, when any time we're having difficult times, a lot of times we're acting in our egos in an unhealthy way. Mm. And he's, and he, and, and so Che's right. He's like, you got to come do something. We got to shake it up and, right. and heal. Right. But the same thing. So when Taylor shows up and Ryan's there and she's still hurt and he says, I'm sorry. And all I could think was like, Summer, or sorry, Taylor hurt him too. She, he lied yeah. about her, him and, she he says I want to tell you how I feel, but then she says, you know what, the bear is more expressive, and and then I thought he doesn't have to say I love you. She just wants some kind of expression, right? Something, and he couldn't do it. Well, he's not very good at that, and he because he doesn't know what he feels yet. So well, I mean, in general, the whole series, he's, he's not like, like Ryan's that. character has been. And you know, when you start a new relationship and like it's great physically and you have the fun times are the fun times and right. any of the negative can make you go, whoa, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready to handle this. Well, more gets revealed. More gets that, revealed. Right. And then it makes you question like, oh, you know, I just want all the good, not necessarily the bad. Right. But we really. Again, that's a very, in real life. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's a mature thing to have to deal with because he's like, she's kind of wacky. Do I want to deal with this? And she's admittedly has a lot of baggage and needs and he's just not doesn't know if he's capable of doing that right, right. so instead she races off to go see this or she or he's going to write a book she says he's going to write a poem and it's long right Ryan. right <laughs> so Henri michelle yeah. so we get like one quick little scene or we have two quick little scenes of sandy at the so beach he was not in this episode yeah i remember so this, i did a scene with him at the beach yeah yeah a check-in right i remember <laughs> peter in. actually going to me at one point he's like I have one day of work on this episode. <laughs> like there were just times where that happened. Yeah. You know, some I noticed us. the license plate in the episode started with a number two. 
That shows what? you how long ago <laughs> <laughs> the show was, because now there are nine, <laughs> right? New license plates start with the number I, nine. Yeah, I didn't even, I, I have did not, not been clocking that, 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 that at research. all. I, I, why I, I do, you know, my brain is <laughs> very interesting. That stuff. I don't yeah. remember yeah. things, but like license plates, I'm like, you guys. So you know how long up. people have had their cars, actually. Yeah, I'm like, well, great. <laughs> I, I didn't get a number like, nine on my new car, and now it automatically <laughs> seems old. Wow. Like, guys, we, I got problems. We do have this one scene, and I just, as a director, I had a quick question because he's giving some great Sandy advice, and he was basically saying, you know, you know, you screwed up, but just well, how does it feel? And he says, it feels like I'm on a roller coaster. Just tell her that. Tell her something to have some action. And I thought, and I noticed that you had a lot of movement with your handheld camera in the scene, right. and, and it was like, what? And when you when you choose to do that as a director, is it because the the, the scene needs energy? We're outside. For me, or, yeah. For me, yeah. It definitely needed energy because it just seemed like another Sandy pitching to Ryan how to work life. Right. And, um, you know, and, and rightfully so, you know, he, you know, Ryan needed that stuff. But it it's borderline boring to me as an artist, okay, to watch that kind of scene just unfold, unfold, unfold without right. some kind of cool thing. And we were at the beach and it was a beautiful day. And I shot some long lens stuff. I shot some steady cam movement stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's funny because it's such a controversy about unmotivated moves uh, with cameras and actors and stuff and, you know, push-ins and all that stuff. And I just felt we needed to, I saw the rehearsal and, you know, it was a choice, death or move the camera. <laughs> And so I moved the camera. <laughs> you know, speaking of camera moves, I have a very specific memory from this episode. When, when, so when this whole um, chlamydia thing is going on, and <laughs> and Kirsten calls to Julie yes. to say, "I just got a call from Spencer," and it's a, it, I remember it specifically because it was a dolly shot, and it's my coverage of the of the phone call, mm. and basically we're going to shoot. My scene is going to shoot with the dolly going back and forth, the camera going back and forth. And, you know, we'd gone to a point where, you know, this is kind of easy dialogue to memorize. And I may have only had like the, maybe that one scene or something. But for some reason, I I remember we were about to say action. And I was like, oh, I don't know my dialogue as well as I thought. Mm -hmm. And I had this shot of adrenaline. It's like that awful feeling of like, yeah, because you if you if you screw up your lines, it costs money basically. And that's, and I'm a perfectionist and I will never forget this feeling of like, oh, you should have spent more time on your dialogue homework last night. And it came wow. out fine and it was there, but I will never forget that moment. I remember sitting Panic. there with that dolly where you go, Oh, no, well, no, was no, the no, dolly no. distracting to you? No, it was simply that I knew that I was like, I thought I had it. And as, as we were saying action, I was like, what do I say? And I went, Oh, I didn't spend enough time on my dialogue. It hap It would happen once in a while. Wow. And it would only happen when I had like just one scene. So you're like, oh, I got one scene. I got it. You still need to spend as much time on one little scene as others. Right. Or you're like me that has like utter panic attack before every action because I've just learned my lines right <laughs> before <laughs> as they're setting up the shot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I like to do it the night before or but sometimes... Like on the night moves specifically, right. those were those are little scenes. Those are not little scenes. Scenes with just one little, um, one tiny little lines. You know, just right. answered like not monologues. Little or anything. one lines are harder to memorize than like a monologue because you have to memorize everyone else's dialogue. Yeah. So you come in on the cues. Right. And I remember going, I didn't spend enough time on this. And they're just, <laughs> they're. It's not that it's a mistake. You have to go through these things to right. experience it. But that, yeah, I yeah, just, yeah, I never it. know. You know, in reality, you wouldn't know that. <laughs> what's going to be distracting or what's not, you know. We you like, know. we appreciate the movements. Oh, no. Like, the, that would, the dolly, I just remember that that's what we were doing. But that right. it wasn't distracting to me. It was my own thing that I realized. Right. Was, um, but going back to... um you know, when the, at the poetry reading. Yes. So I love that. Oh, that's a good poem. scene. That was a good scene. His poem was so cute. But, but also how these like ladies, I mean, th when there's a lot of ladies out there who just are like, would, you know, love that kind of, yeah, yeah kind of thing. But yeah, sure. his poem was really sweet. It was sweet. I was proud of Ryan in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, he did good. He did. He did. He did but, good. But there was a funny thing, you know, when when Henri Michel finishes, which was a beautiful thing, and then all of a sudden he says, 
what does he say? Um, not so not so fast. And there's a drum roll. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like, catch that. He was like, my turn. And then it cuts to a commercial. But then it's, he's back up. Right. But there was a little drum roll. Right. I, I, like, have okay. a, I have a poem. Oh, yeah, I have a poem. <laughs> right. I have a poem. But then when, um, you know, she he says this and then she runs out because she, Henri Michel, you see yeah. in his face and he's gone. There's this really, I had to look it up, this haunting music as she finds his letter that says, I love love, I, but I love, love, love more, but I, I don't want to be alone in it. Right. This beautiful song that was chosen, um, Tel K to S by Charlotte Gainsbourg. Oh. Hmm. I don't know if you remember, but I had to look it up because I couldn't tell if it was the composition or if it was an original song. Oh. And it was so beautiful. And uh, anyway, it was pretty. It was gorgeous. I was shocked wow. at Taylor's what she does at the end with Ben. Like I was, I was like, cause it seemed like the last episode, like Summer kind of did this thing with Seth. Like, I can't marry you. I need to find me or whatever. And then at the end of this, like Taylor's kind of like doing the same thing. And I was surprised. Well, she, because she's finally saying, I realize I'm not ready to even hear you say it. Like she's all of a sudden doing this self-reflection, which is so important for growth that some of us don't do until our 50s. Definitely don't do at 18 or whatever, <laughs> right. however old I'm they like, are. <laughs> she's like, I need to be alone and I'm not ready for you to actually say it because she kept saying- Well, I both of them, Summer and Taylor having those realizations yes. is like, no 18 year old's gonna- I don't know. I don't know. You think I, maybe? I, I gotta tell you something. I bought it and I'll tell you why I bought okay. it. Um, because I think it had a lot to do with her realization of needing to be loved mm. and needing for this guy to say it. And I think a lot of a lot of young people make the mistake of not checking that out. Mm -hmm. Of what is this something I really, you know, am connecting to, or is this something that I just really want to feel and and be part of everybody else that's in love mm -hmm. um, in my peer group or whatever. Um, and I'd like to actually see more of that. And I I've, and I can honestly say I've seen my daughter go through stuff, um, you know, before she met the right guy and stuff with different guys that it was all in the need of wanting to be loved. Mm -hmm. And they were dicks, man. They yeah. were assholes. I know those guys. I did not like, oh, can I say that? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, they were. And and I was so proud of my daughter when she just gave all that up and just went on her own journey and just kind of figured it out. And but then, was she 18? Actually, it was from the time she was like 16 till I would have to say 19. I'd say CG's doing the same thing at 23 now, from wow. 18 on. Right. No, I mean, yeah. she was in that that bubble of of no not making that decision for herself right. in her young teens or, or late teens because she wanted to be like her friends who had a boyfriend or she wanted to be like this that had a relationship, you know, they're, they're comparing, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, this is like the OC psychological session. Right? <laughs> um, this is like, wow. Uh, and my daughter will kill me. But that said, once she moved off and found herself and was able to give herself the, the confidence of yeah. actually accepting love, she was able to really embrace it. 100%. Right? I've just done that probably in my 30s to right. now. Well, you know, which is later. It, it just depends. Yeah, of course. But yeah. You have to be able to be alone and with yourself before right. you can accept that. They, and your self-worth, yeah. you know. There's that that there's a very healthy progression. Not everybody gets to experience it, but when you're very young to like, you know, your whole life is about your parents and when you're a teenager it's about your peers and your 20s it should be selfish so that you if you've gone through those yeah. progressions at some point you are ready to have dependence or be responsible for children and have a right. partner but if you haven't gone through those if you've skipped any of those it comes out in different ways it really does yeah. Yeah. it really does yeah. in negative ways it really does yeah. and it, i think it's it's even harder in the hollywood scene or the music scene or whatever in relationships because of it's who you're connected to, and it, you know it turns into such a messed up situation sometimes. Well, and the does. validation thing is so you know, and yes, I mean Taylor literally says, "It's crazy how much I desire to hear I love you, I yeah. love you, I love you," and and so I I give her props for saying, you know, I can't, I I'm not ready actually to even hear you say it, right? And and he says, okay. So I, I think it's a, it's very healthy, but it's also it's a little bit somber for her because she's like, whoa, I need to figure something out. 
and as as intelligent as she is, she also knows that she's got some growth to do. Right. And 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 Summer as well. Right. Where, yeah. Right. But I think we all, and, and just to piggyback on that for one second, is I think we all want to hear I love you from whoever we're dealing with, you know, whether it's a showrunner or it's a, <laughs> or whatever. Right, we right. want to hear that, that, that we're accepted. Right. And we, and that, 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 uh, by the way, Ryan never said I love you to me. I just want you to know that. <laughs> and I'm still hurt. Um, and I introduced him to Steve Perry, who's his, you know, hero. Oh my so, God. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I thought he'd at least say it then. <laughs> you got some bones to pick. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, the, the, idea, the idea, though, for me is like, I think we all want to do that. And, and again, this is another thing the OC did so well was to, to not deny us both feelings. Okay, the feeling of being loved, the feeling of not being able to say I love you, the feeling of like, I'm not getting love. I mean, that's, that's an insane you know, combination of real life. It really is. And whether it's projected in late teens, early twenties or whatever, you know, it was all in the same bag Yeah. in a weird way. Yeah. Well, the end of the episode goes into, uh, wait, I just want to say Kirsten literally is some, <laughs> somewhat forgiven. There's like, you know, and Julie's like, Oh, come on, Kirsten, you miss me. She's like, please just let this woman think she had chlamydia. But then she tells Sandy <laughs> in his second quick little scene that, um, she's manipulative and I should never have gone in business with her. Julie's done a lot of awful things. Like yeah. I think sending Ryan <laughs> off to get Bolchuk was worse than the, this turning into a prostitution ring. <laughs> <laughs> Saying those things out loud, you're just like... Right. It doesn't sound right, does no. it? No. <laughs> you're right. There's so many things that she's done. But anyway, she's like, but she's the best friend you have, which is kind of sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Manipulative. <laughs> but... Che is telling Julie oh my God. that he fell yeah. in love with an otter, and Julie's like, we need to change the locks, and good luck. So <laughs> Che's in love with Seth? That's what's happening? Well, I well, think that was the realization it, in the right? tent. Was, he has, he's holding up his picture. Well, he comes back at the very last <laughs> shot wrong? of this episode yeah. is him staring at the, the picture, picture of Seth. <laughs> that was like, oh my God, this You're is so order. out of left field. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm telling you, I felt high watching this episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> oh, great. Man. Yeah, I think that was the maybe part of the intent anyway. Yeah, that yeah. was that was fun. I don't know what this show is, but I am enjoying it. I'll I know I'm that. I'm really excited go. for the next episode because I'm like I need like I, I know well, we only have five left. Yeah, well we'll see what happens. But I, we look forward. Happens. So the earthquake episode we know and remember well. Right. So I even remember it. Oh, I forgot to say something. What? Guess what? What? I'm watching this episode, yeah. and I'm in my pajamas, and they're peace sign pajamas. Yes. I still have the bottoms to those pajamas in my closet. Yay! So every episode, Mindy's like, I still have that. I have that. And I'm like, they gave me nothing. <laughs> Watching this episode, I was like, I have my pajama pants. <laughs> I actually thought they were so cute. That says a lot about me, too, because they were like cozy. I had them, too. You did have them, too. I had them in gray color. I had them in gray. I remember you having them, And in too. fact, I may have just, <laughs> it might be in my giveaway bag. You I better, you better uh, They were out. cute. Okay. Yeah. Actually, no, they were in my garage because I wasn't sure. If, it's like a they're long, like tunic, like pajama bottom. Anyway. I don't remember. Sorry. I don't have the top. I have the bottom. I have the top, not oh. the bottom. Oh. Together oh. we make a pair. <laughs> okay. Sorry. So <laughs> anyway. Okay. So shall we go into voicemails? Yeah, because we Yes. Okay. Let's We've go. We've got the some first voicemails one. for you. Email. We're it's reading an, it. Oh, sorry, John. it's an email. It's not a voicemail. It's an email that we're gonna there's two voicemails and one email. Got it. We are we are with it. We're going to start with the email from John in Los Angeles. <laughs> Hi, Patrick. Big fan of your work. And The Night Moves, episode 15, is one of my all-time favorite episodes. Spoiler alert. But can you explain to us, non-industry people, how you filmed that episode? How did you film the Aftershock earthquake? What effects did you use? And did you film most of the episode on stage or location? There you go. Okay. Well, we did film most of the episode on stage, mm -hmm. uh, for sure. Uh, you know, this this episode for me, I, I was very passionate about. I really love this episode. And I'll tell you why I love this episode. Because number one, Stephanie Savage wrote a really good episode. She allowed me the freedom to bring in the new ideas that I had to shoot the episode. And what happened was, is I was coexisting with my first few episodes of Friday Night Lights, which is shot completely different, mm -hmm. completely 
Such a handheld, issue. completely, uh, just completely different. I wanted to bring that energy to the OC in season four, but it, it couldn't get there until this episode. And I thought Stephanie, Josh, and Matt Barber, who was the um, editor, you, I think you had Matt on the show. Matt Ramsey. Matt Ramsey. Ramsey is, is yeah. well, Ramsey. No, no he Barber. was gone by now. We I don't. We haven't had Matt Barber. Oh well, we whoever had Tim we had. Good. We had Tim Good. Yeah, well, whoever edited this with Josh and Stephanie at the final mix of this, and uh, they really created the zone very well in their producer's cut. Okay, whatever I delivered, they were able to massage and make into this what I thought was a really stimulating visual episode. And I love the quick scenes with everybody. I love the silence uh, with everybody. Um, so to create the earthquake stuff, we would actually shake stuff on stage and we would shake the camera a little bit. Mm -hmm. And things would fall and things would come down. So that was always kind of challenging because you'd have an actor under it <laughs> and stuff, you know. And I thought every actor just, you know, when you get towards the end of the fourth season of any show, Everybody's ready to be done. Everybody's ready to go. The crew's ready to go. Everybody's ready to split, you know, because you put in so much time and hours and trying to figure out what real life's about. But in this particular episode, everybody showed up to the plate on this. I mean, the stuff in the um, ice cream parlor <laughs> was hysterical to me. He's that so kid, funny. Gary, um, I, I don't know his real name. I wish I did. I think I had it down somewhere. But that whole relationship with Caitlin and Julie and that kid and the ice cream kid there, was just so storytelling to me. It yeah. was just his his the way he connived, you know, like, oh, the pier is gone and all this stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all that stuff was brilliant to me. The stuff with you and Autumn, and I'll go back to now the <laughs> the flare gun and all that stuff. You know, Autumn did a like a, a some kind of role into the position. <laughs> she did. Yeah, like a CIA <laughs> person, you know, like in a mission and came up with this thing and shoots her mother. So, you know, who was, com who was coming in the house, yeah. And then you guys load the mom in the wagon with holding pancake and going to wheel her to the hospital where everybody meets at the end of the episode. So I have to say that, that I got to bring in a new energy of my own into this episode. I had a, a, a solid episode to begin with. So it, it, it seemed to marry really well together, my energy, the actor's energy, everybody's energy. Uh, even... Even the scene with uh, the scenes with again paired up brilliantly for this particular episode, you know, with uh, Ryan and Brody on those on on, on their outing, you know, uh, and he's got glass in him and all this shit, you know. It's like they it felt like the first season to me. It just uh -huh. felt like it was new. It was like the energy was right again. Editorial probably had a lot to do with that, but it. it <laughs> It was such a wonderful episode to be part of for me. It was, it was, you know, I'm really grateful I got to do it because it was the last one I did. Mm -hmm. But it was a real high for me to just be there doing that. And it was a lot of work. And that, that, you know, uh, Daryl was pushing the cart, you know, he got the, <laughs> the, the Range Rover for his shopping cart. So, you know, he could be taken to the hospital. Um, so Ryan could be taken to the hospital in the shopping cart by Adam. But um, I just, I don't know. I hope that answered the question. That definitely yeah. answered I went the question. Off on a very I, positive role there. No, I, I look forward to well, watching I, it's it. It's funny because I do remember, because we were not there on that episode yet, but I do remember, think, you know, the whole um, ice cream parlor thing where this kid was keeping us inside the parlor because he liked Caitlin. Yeah. Is that what it was? Yeah. 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 What a great. Yeah. It's a great way to keep you there. And I don't yeah. remember her shooting Veronica, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> he, no, it only shoots her in the foot. But. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. still, a shot that's awesome. Shot. Uh, shot is a shot. <laughs> okay. But uh, the lead up to that was hysterical. And again, that's where the whole thing, you know, finding pancakes and all that stuff. Yeah, I do remember like, crawling yeah. through the fake, you know. Yeah. Well, your I'm instinct when you hear the noise was to right. hide. And her instinct was always to pull you out of wherever you hid. <laughs> and I thought that was hilarious. I can't wait to watch it. Some of the challenges, I think, what you were touching on is that there's a lot of times if there's things that are falling, then it's up to props and, and set and all and such to reset things. And, right. and the, there's continuity issues with all of that but and to do it safely as well. But it's a, it is pretty wild to be an actor and walk on that set and to see these, you know, beams and such. But there's 
placed in a way that it's right. obviously structurally sound, so it's safe for everyone. One would hope. But, yeah. Well, even at the end when Sandy says, oh, the old girl held up, referring to the house, yeah, and they're all walking in, and they see the destruction of the interior, which was done on stage for sure. Right. Um, and there's a, a pelican sitting there. <laughs> and you're just going, wow, yeah, you know, welcome to the OC. It's a very <laughs> realistic earthquake. thing because um, the, my neighbor, my next, when I was on, there was a big earthquake in 75, I think, or 70, sorry, maybe 72. And their driveway had yes. this huge crack down the middle of it. Yes. And it was my best friend down the street. And I was like, I always thought like, how did that crack? And mom, dad, that's from an earthquake. It's this big crack. So it does happen in Orange County. Yes. Okay. Let's go on to the next. Um, we have a voicemail. Hi, Patrick, Rachel, and Melinda. As a new viewer of the show, I, yes, I have watched all the seasons. I just like to really thank you for making this podcast because it allows me to really feel for that time and to understand what was happening. And yeah, it just, it feels like I'm watching the show in real time. Anyways, as for my question, do you feel that the OC ended off right where it was supposed to be? But do you feel that there was earlier seasons or like in the beginning of season four where you felt that the ending could have been there instead of where it was supposed to be? Um, also, wait, another question, and this has to be for Patrick. Um, is there a certain cast member you liked working with? Um, Rachel Bilson. I'm recording those episodes. <laughs> uh, thank you. Yeah, imagine. Imagine. <laughs> You're like, well. <laughs> well, now that we're here. Yeah. Yeah, Rachel and Melinda. I, 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 you they, say they someone from down. Friday Night Lights. <laughs> <laughs> right? You're like, that's Scott Porter. <laughs> well, I love him, too. Well, me, too. I actually like how everybody I work with. I really do. Some are more difficult than others, but um, didn't you do parent parenthood? Yeah. Parenthood, because I remember Dax always yeah, I love saying Dax. how much Dax he cool. loved you, Dax Shepard. Yeah. yeah, I liked him a lot. Yes, man. He's a cool dude. Yeah, I've been fortunate. I've been really fortunate. You know. So did did you feel like the OC ended the way it was supposed to? I kind of do. Well, I don't remember how it ends. I mean, there's a wedding, but I don't know if that's actually in the episode or if it's like a jump to the future it's slightly but it's part of the episode. it's current it's a, no it's it's a jump but right. but I, I i feel like and i think i feel like the general consensus is it's one of the most satisfying endings to a series oh that's great yeah because right. often often shows don't even know that they're going yes. away that's so they true. don't have the proper like you know button closure at closure. all yeah yeah, yeah. So. i think it you know again and i've been in television a long time and i've seen things come to an end abruptly and some planned. And uh, I think that, you know, this was all planned. I think this was all planned, you know, to come to this conclusion. Yes. I don't think it was like, oh, we're done. We got to do something. Right. I think everybody was somewhat done. And uh, it was a good time. It was mm -hmm. a good time to just kind of go off, you know. And the other, you know, the other thing I learned in television a lot is that when you start in high school, man, you have a three-year lifespan, <laughs> technically. And then you go into whole new storylines in college and stuff, and that can be a push. So I think it ended appropriately. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. too. That's the consensus. I think so, too. I like this last one from Anonymous, Patrick. What's this? Who was the hardest cast member to work with? Oh, man. Ben. Shit. <laughs> Shit. That's a no-brainer. <laughs> what? It was. It was really hard to work with him. I, you know, I really tried, and he... He just wouldn't accept my my Kool Aid, you might say. Your Kool Aid. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't drink the Kool Aid. <laughs> he didn't drink the Kool Aid. I just learned what and, that reference came. Yeah, from. Yeah, and I really <laughs> tried, and I really liked him a, a lot, you know. And I really tried to, you know, and maybe I just tried too hard, but I felt like I pushed him away every time we came hmm. together. Interesting. You know? And I don't know what that was, or whether it was just an armor of his own, or mm. or what. But you know. Um, that's my only regret that I wasn't able to really, you know, heal that relationship before I left. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe this is an opening to do that. And now. maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's all past. Maybe it's all good. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> I think it's all good. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. It's one of those things like we talk about that we are talking about something that happened 20 years ago, 17 respectively, respectfully. But, um, but yeah, it's all about, you know, I, I know that, it's an interesting thing being on a series for a number of years that um, sometimes 
as actors, the director, I always love direction from, right. from directors, but, but sometimes if you're on, if you're in season four and you've got a brand new director and he's the first time they've been there and then they're telling you about your character, I'm like, mm, you can help, help me out with the right. scene, but I don't think you know my character better than me. I get it. Like those I kinds of things totally. can yeah. happen. I get that totally. And I have full respect for actors on that. And no matter where I go, uh, you know, I worked with Don Johnson on Nash Bridges, so oh. yeah, so you know, he makes Ben look lightweight, but uh, you know, I worked, I did, a I couple mean, in the sense of, of that, uh, yeah, did you? yeah, yeah, he's a you know, he's a control freak, and oh, yeah. uh, you know, he's he's <laughs> actually, yeah, well, you know, I mean, the so book, I had a lot to weigh with my relationships, <laughs> yeah, in I mean, life. I mean, ben, I saw an interview with um Adam recently where he said, you know, leaving the OC would not early would not have been an honorable thing to do, but I was creatively done after a couple of years yeah like from what i had explored i was just so ready to move on and i think both ben and adam were were there and i understand right. that i mean he was what 28 29 by the show the show by the time the show ended ben, ben yeah right right yeah, and yeah. he was ready to move on to darker places you know and yeah. and, and and he did he and didn't he want did, to be yeah. he did fine he did he's successful at it you know yeah he's got a new pilot that he's doing oh does he yeah awesome new big pilot well i wish him the best on yes. all that you know well, Patrick, thank right. you so much for being done? here. Okay. Well, we, we, we can <laughs> still hang out. You want to talk I'm some more? Yeah. I mean, no, I'm good. No, I'm good. I really loved today's episode. Yeah, just was... the way you you take. Thank you for taking the time and watching yes. it a, a number of times. And and it really is an interesting thing of how the one thing we do have, the thing that we can control, is our perception of things in the yeah. world. That's what it all comes back to. Yeah. You right. know, it really does. And for what we do and the hours we put in and the time we put in, um, it's, you know, I mean, I'm thoroughly grateful for this opportunity I had, you know, to experience with you all and, and your whole cast. And even even with Ben, you know, Ben, I remember, you know, it's funny, I was funny. I told you I introduced him to Steve Perry of Journey because Journey was his favorite yeah. band. And so Steve was hang. Steve used to hang out a lot. I don't know if he. Is, is, oh, this is a true story. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Was like, I was like, oh, he's going no, off script. No, he'd come hang out on the set because he was bored. So, Perry, he, Steve Perry was on our set? Yeah, a lot. What? Yeah. <laughs> and so anyway, so I go, and Ben was really taken by him. He really was. He and, did love Journey. Yeah. So I, I said, you want to meet him? And he goes, yeah. So I take Ben's hand and he goes, and I, I start walking him over there. And Ben goes, you got it. You can't hold my hand, man. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I can't be like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going to hold man. my hand, dude. Oh, but man. yeah, yeah. So that was my gift, you know, to like, oh, I tried to open up our relationship and didn't. But um, yeah, <laughs> true story, though. That is so cool. Wait, yeah. why was Steve Harry on our set? Are you friends because with him? Yeah, friends we've been friends him. for years. Oh, how can I miss this one? Yeah, I don't know how you missed this one. Because I love Journey, too. I know. Yeah. Wait, who doesn't yeah, love Journey? Yeah, right? Oh so, my gosh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's so, so cool. Did you yeah. say that on our last podcast? Did he tell that I story? Don't think, I don't think I don't you know. did. No, I, don't think I didn't you tell did. that story. I don't know. No. You know, Patrick, every time I do remember, every time we saw that you were directing the episode, I was always so happy and oh, so excited and was like, fuck yes, we have Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> every single time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you so well, much. Because yeah. again, it was part of my life, part of my growth, part of my whatever. Um, and I continue that growth. and. You know, right. I, just, I just hope to, you know, just be a kind, nice person for the You're rest the of best. my life. Thanks. Still to this day, after everything uh, I've done, it's so I'm always like Patrick. Yeah, the fucking uh, best. I appreciate you. Thank you. They Thank appreciate you, so you much so for much. taking the time and and all of your wisdom and and my wisdom. We're, well, we're all. I mean, we're and all spirit animal. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I took a picture. That. Yeah, just absolutely. Hi, just in case. Katie's definitely gonna pull her card <laughs> after I. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, we got him, Katie. Okay. <laughs> Should we say that? Yes. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. Follow, rate, and review. Welcome to the OC Bitches wherever you listen to your podcasts. If you like to watch us, check it out on YouTube. And you can now listen to bonus features as well as season one and season two of the OC Bitches by going to castmedia.com slash cast plus. That's cast with a K, media.com slash cast plus. Bye, bitches. Welcome to the OC Bitches is brought to you by Cast Media. Executive produced by Colin Thompson, Harris Lane, produced by Katie Kurtwright, edited by Parker Flores and our technical engineers, Travis Holden and Dustin Park.